Coming up on this episode of SIVA TV, we learn about what a person with cystic fibrosis experiences, how to take a break from our phones, and how to properly wash our hands. Stay tuned for all this and more on SIVA TV. and welcome to SIVA TV. My name is Yusuf and I'm so excited to be your host today. This is the show where we feature educational videos made by student producers all across Sacramento County. This season we have some very exciting and unique videos for you as well as some behind the scenes interviews with the producers. I hope you are as excited as I am. So without further ado, three, two, one, action. First, we're gonna look at life from the perspective of one brave student who is living with cystic fibrosis. Ethan is opening our eyes to a new world so we can grow and know more about his life. My name is Ethan and I am 12 years old. I have a genetic disease called cystic fibrosis. This is a day in the life of having cystic fibrosis. Every morning, I take a lot of pills. One is for my liver to keep my levels down. Some are vitamins, since my body doesn't absorb vitamins, as well as people without CF. An allergy pill, my sinuses. And the last two are an amazing new medication called Trichafta. Trichafta helps CFers with GI issues, increase in lung function, and has helped with weight gain. Most CFers need to take enzymes when eating to absorb nutrients and help with weight gain. But due to medications like Trichafta, my body started to absorb the nutrients from the food I eat making it, so I no longer have to take these pills. I need to take 22 enzyme pills each day. You can imagine my excitement. This is uncommon for most CFers. I have to do treatments two times a day, even if I'm healthy. In the morning, my treatment takes 50 minutes to complete. First, the butyrol opens my airways, then the hypertonic saline thins out the mucus in my lungs. Finally, I end my treatment with the vest machine. It breaks up the thin mucus even more. In the evening, my treatments are 20 minutes shorter, but look somewhat the same. Instead of hypertonic saline, it's pulmazine. Then, I finish with the vest. According to CFF.org, cystic fibrosis is a genetic disorder that affects the lungs, pancreas, and other organs. According to Emily Entourage.org, people with CF can't be together. Twice a day, once in the morning, once at night, I do a sinus rinse to help clear out my sinuses. I've had two surgeries to clear out blockages and remove any polyps that were found. According to CFF.org, more than half of the cystic fibrosis population is over 18. At least four times a year, but usually more. I have to get a blood draw to monitor, monitor my liver and my vitamin levels, check for diabetes, and many other things. On average, they take about four vials of blood. I have a special lab assistant who takes my blood as she can always find my small veins. Every three months, I go to the clinic where I see my pulmonologist, dietitian, respiratory therapist, social worker, and GI. Here are two interviews with my pulmonologist and respiratory therapist. I'm Dr. Diana Goh. I work at Kaiser Roseville here in Eureka. 
campus. I'm a pulmonologist, a pediatric pulmonologist that specializes in asthma, cystic fibrosis, lung diseases, and also sleep problems. I work with Brian Carbo, the respiratory therapist that you, you will see in the next video. What is cystic fibrosis? Cystic fibrosis is a disease that some children are born with. It causes thick mucus in different organs of the body, including the lungs, the intestines, the liver, and the pancreas. And when a child has cystic fibrosis, it's because of the gene, an abnormal cystic fibrosis gene, that they get from both parents, from both the mother and the father. If they get only one of the cystic fibrosis gene, it does not cause cystic fibrosis. But the, ch the child with the cystic fibrosis gene can give that to their children. And so in cystic fibrosis, a lot of times they can have thick mucus that affects the lungs and cause lung infections. And over time, these lung infections can damage the lungs. And also this thick mucus can affect the liver, the pancreas, so that nutrients are not absorbed well when they eat, causing poor weight gain and abnormal stools. What does a pulmonologist do? Pulmonologist is a doctor who specializes in lung diseases. So in cystic fibrosis, it mainly affects the lungs. So the pulmonologist directs the care together with the dietitian, the respiratory therapist, the social worker, and the GI doctor. Because cystic fibrosis affect a lot of different body systems and each person is different. So each child with cystic fibrosis needs specialized and personalized care and the pulmonologist direct it and try to maintain the child with cystic fibrosis as healthy as possible to enjoy their lives. How many people have cystic fibrosis in the world? Currently, there are 30,000 people affected here in the United States, but 70,000 worldwide. And more than 50% are 18 years old and above. What are some of the tests CFers need? So first, we talk about diagnosing CF. Um, every child born has to undergo newborn screening to test for cystic fibrosis, to screen for cystic fibrosis. But the primary test to diagnose cystic fibrosis is sweat test. Um, basically, that is applying some chemical on the forearm of the child and allowing the child to sweat and measuring the chloride content of the sweat. Uh, to diagnose cystic fibrosis. The other test to diagnose cystic fibrosis is genetic testing, and it's through the blood. You draw blood and you send it to the laboratory. And other tests that a child with cystic fibrosis would need is the annual blood draw to check for liver function, to check for the electrolytes in the body, the nutritional status of the body, and the vitamin levels of the child. So that's done annually and also chest x-ray to check the lung parenchyma to see if there's any lung involvement from cystic fibrosis. And that's what we do. And if the child is more than 10 years old, we do the oral glucose tolerance test to see if they have CF-related diabetes. Hello, my name is Brian Carbo. I'm a respiratory therapist. I've been a respiratory therapist for 20, coming up on 24 years now. I've been working um, outpatient with uh, cystic fibrosis patients for the last six years, and I work at Kaiser Permanente. What does a respiratory therapist do? Respiratory therapy encompasses a huge number of things. Respiratory therapists work in the hospital with people with ventilators. We help deliver babies, and some of us work in the clinic and help people um, that are outside of the hospital. Um, respiratory therapy breaks down into going around helping relieve the effort of breathing. And that's what we do in a nutshell. What happens during lung, lung function tests? 
Um, during a lung function test, uh, a patient will come into the office and um, uh, use the spirometer. It'll tell us um, how big of a breath they can take and how fast they can blow out the air that's in their lungs. It um, doesn't hurt and it's a relatively easy process uh, and it lets us know how healthy patients are. What, what treatments are available to help with the lungs? So there's multitude of treatments available to help CF patients with their lungs. Um, we refer to it a lot as airway clearance and respiratory therapists are very involved in, in airway clearance and um, making sure that our patients do, do their treatments daily. Um, what we routinely offer is every day a patient will do some inhaled medications followed by what's called a vest system um, which helps shake up and remove secretions from the lungs and that will be the end of their treatments. So they'll have to do that twice a day. This is me doing a lung function test at clinic. The lung function test tells my doctors how well my lungs are doing. Normal breath. One super duper great right, big one. Blow hard and fast like you're blowing out my birthday candle. Keep blowing until I tell you to stop. Me too. You want to put those on or you want me to put them on? Normal breath. Normal breath. One more, all the way out. Super rapid breath in, fast. Push, 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 push. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Rapid breath in. Awesome, dude. When I'm sick, even if it's a runny nose, I have to do four treatments a day, sometimes five. Sometimes when I'm sick, I end up in the hospital for 10 to 14 days on average. My longest stay was 18 days right before COVID. When I'm at the hospital, I'm hooked to an IV, which I hate. This gives me antibiotics to help fight the virus. I do multiple treatments a day. My parents take turns staying with me. My grandparents and my uncle will also help and take turns spending the night. My hope is that one day, CF stands for a cure found. Thanks to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, progress has been made with treatments and medications. My hope is that in the near future, I won't have to do all these treatments and medications and that I'll live a happy, long life. Thanks, Ethan, for educating us about cystic fibrosis. Physical health is very important. So next up, Haley has a PSA about valuing our physical health. Let's go to Haley to find out what it takes to make a video. To make a good video, the skills you need is hard work, um, a knowledge of video production, and really a lot of dedication. In my video, you learn about how to be a really great high school athlete to go to college. Physical inactivity can lead to energy imbalance, obesity, and disease like cancers. All of this can happen if I don't make healthy decisions? It sure can. All it takes is about 60 minutes of physical exercise at least three days a week to be healthy. Physical activity tends to make students have better grades, attendance, behavior, controlled weight, overall fitness, and reduces symptoms of anxiety and depression. As the COVID-19 pandemic comes to an end, we need to continue to practice washing our hands to perfection because clean hands keep COVID-19 and other illnesses away. To make sure we have these skills perfected, Olivia has produced a quick PSA on how to wash our hands properly. Hi, my name is Olivia, and I'm gonna be teaching you how to wash your hands properly. First, get your hands wet. Next, get soap. Wash for 20 seconds. If you need to, you can sing the happy birthdays or the ABCs. And that's how you properly wash your hands. You're also gonna look like this guy. 102, I should've washed my hands. Perfect. Thanks for that refresher. Now, I think we need Kaser to show us techniques about how to breathe deeply and calmly. We could all benefit physiologically and psychologically from better breath work. Take it away, Kaser. Inhale and let's take a deep breath. The importance of this most primitive act 
has been known to man for centuries. From the earliest yogis to the most elite athletes, our livelihood relies on this primordial function. But in our busy lives, we have forgotten how to take the true deep breath. Learning the art of breathing has helped millions of people find inner peace in their busy schedules and hectic worlds. Let's explore where breathwork came from and how it can enhance our lives today. Controlled breathing has its roots in spiritual awakening and meditative relaxation commonly found in yoga and meditation. These ancient practices were first used in the 5th and 6th centuries BCE. They were referenced in ancient Indian texts such as the Bhagavad Gita. In the earliest civilizations of Greece, India, and China, breath took on many names such as Numa, Prana, and Chi. These people knew about the power of breath and acknowledged its power on our consciousness. Uh, the breath is something that we all have had since we've been here uh, alive. It's, it's the one constant we have uh, as humans. The first thing we do when we're born, last thing we do when we die. And my guess would be that as soon as consciousness was formed, we probably were be playing with breath work. <laughs> breath work, also known as pranayama, the regulation of the breath through certain techniques and exercises stems from the word prana, meaning life force, and yama, meaning control. Pranayama is also used in conjunction with yoga practices, such as Shudarshan Kriya. Some examples of breathwork include lion's breath and breath of fire. Breathwork coaches often refer to a baby's breathing as the most natural, unadulterated form of breathing. To understand this, we must look at a deep breathing technique utilized by newborns. Abdominal breathing emphasizes the use of the diaphragm, making the oxygen and carbon dioxide transfer and overall breath much more efficient. Exercises such as lion's breath help to bring out this diaphragmatic breathing. Babies breathe, most babies that are healthy, breathe almost perfect at birth, and that's because when they inhale, and you can't see it on camera, but the belly's gonna extend out. When they exhale, naturally, even their little shoulders relax down and the belly comes in towards the spine. But then as we grow up and grow older, we forget how to breathe with that vitality of a newborn infant. And it's really that, you know, um, like nowadays these like tight schedules and tight bodies and the belts, it's, it, they're just kind of taking our breath away. The benefits of controlled breathing are multifold, both physically and mentally. This includes reduced cortisol release, which helps to stress control, better digestion, a boosted immune system, pain relief, lowered blood pressure, and increased energy. The vagus nerve sends signals about your digestion. It sends signals about hormones. It sends signals to your heart. What better way to regulate yourself and decide how you want to feel in either a scary situation, a situation where you need to be creative, or at the end of the night when you are dead tired and you need to go to sleep and you can't, your breath can put you to sleep. You know, when it, when it comes to benefits of yoga and breath work, I think it's all these health benefits are really like incidental. They're like a side effect. Really what you gain is that um, focus and peace of mind and just feeling calm and, um, you know, feeling good. In our society, mental health is very stigmatized. Breath is one of the most valuable tools in helping someone deal with mental illness as well as managing the everyday stress. People who practice breathwork on a daily basis report feeling more alert and more relaxed, ready to take on the day's challenges in stride. We feel so refreshed and kind of reborn because usually we, <laughs> we're not allowed to express our emotions in such intense way. And here we actually invite people to intensify. So if they want to cry, they like really go for it, give it 100%. If they want to be angry, so like give you anger 100% and we facilitate this process is without doing anything I become more centered I think that's the right word more centered after doing this uh, Kriya 
Adults are not the only members of society that benefit from breathwork. Breathwork coaches discuss how students can benefit from these techniques in a school setting. Jillian Pransky, who's a yoga teacher, says our breath is our life partner. So for kids to understand that they're taking an exam and they're not supposed to talk and they can't open their book, they can't access a computer, they've for literally forgotten how to think or take the test, they can do some simple breath work, relax down the nervous system, and access their potential again. Finally, all we need is a place to start. I think it's like time, place, and circumstance, right? We live in a modern world, like how many people can get up two hours before work and practice yoga or before school and breath work. Four square breathing is just the place to start. Four square breathing is a technique that allows you to imagine your breath as a breathing cycle on a one to one to one to one ratio. It is shown to give you an energy boost, help with muscle fatigues, alleviate headaches, and relieves you of other stress related symptoms. This is a technique that most people find um, pretty calming and relaxing and doesn't take a lot of effort. So with box breathing, you can sit or lay down and you don't have to do anything fancy with your hands. You're going to make what we call an ocean sound through the back of your throat. And it, you can do this um, with your mouth closed and it's basically inhaling. And if you listen very closely, you're going to hear the ocean sound, what we call the ocean sound in the back of my throat. And it's just the sound of air through, moving through your throat. So breathing through the nose with the mouth closed. And as you're breathing, the belly is extending. As you're exhaling, the belly is coming back towards your spine. We're going to inhale for a count of four. Hold for a count of four like at the top of the box. Exhale to a count of four and then hold again on the bottom. So if you imagine four sides to a box, breathing in, holding, exhaling, and holding again. And I'll show you one more round where you can actually hear my breath and I won't do the counting. So I'm going to exhale. The power of breath is ready to be harnessed by each of us. The benefits abound and are ready to be discovered by all, old and young. Take a deep breath and let's begin. to continue to protect our lungs in order to remain healthy. So let's listen to Vivian as she educates us about the dangers of smoking. Did you know 90% of smokers started when they were young? Smoking can lead to many horrible things such as cancer, diabetes, heart disease, and lung disease. All of these can damage your lungs and even kill you. And even if you don't care about your own health, think about the people around you. Secondhand smoking is real and very harmful. So save yourself and others and don't smoke. For more information, scan the QR code on the screen. Adding on to that important message, we have one more anti-smoking PSA. And to give us more insight about why this message is so important, Nick is here to explain the production and purpose behind this PSA. Smoking is to die for. Take it away, Nick. My name is Nick Braver. I go to Vista del Lago High School. The name of my video is Smoking is to Die For. In our video, you see a teen who gets addicted to drugs and you kind of just see like the progression of his addiction and how it turns out. I think viewers should just learn to never start because I don't think anyone would want to turn out like that. Hey man, you don't look so good. You want to smoke?
Sometimes we require some extra help from emergency responders. Let's learn about how and when to call 911. Holly, it's your time to shine. When you call 911, you want to stay calm and answer their questions clearly. 911, what's your emergency? I'll make call 911 when it's a real emergency. And finally, as our world turns to technology, it's crucial to find a balance between electronics and nature. Nathan is here to show the possible risks of phone addiction and promote the necessity of taking phone breaks. Hey, BJ. Uh, are you okay? Why are you home so late? I was just out with some friends. You've been gone all day. I'm sorry. Are you okay? So I checked in on him, and um, his charger isn't in there with it. And you know how he gets when his phone dies. Shoot, I took it. That's all we have for you today, but guess what? We have more episodes and even more videos, so if you want to check out anything else brought to you by the SECC, like the SIVAs, go to secctv.org for more information. My name is Yusuf, and thanks for joining me for this episode of SIVA TV. See you next time.